and uh, so yeah, I just got up and haven't had breakfast yet, uh, but I had some cookies last night, <laughs> had, had a little wine, so yeah, that's uh, that as far as my cheating went so far. How does this feel, Dirk, the day after, uh, day one of your retirement? Yeah, day one of uh, the rest of my life starts, <laughs> you know, where you don't have to think basketball at all times, you know, it's just, uh, you know, it consumes, obviously, your energy. And, uh, uh, and that's the way I wanted it. Uh, I, was, I was, like I said yesterday, living, breathing basketball at all times, and it's time to, to move on. And, you know, basketball will always be a big part of my life, uh, but not for, for, for now. Uh, I'm going to need a little break. You know? I need to get away. I need to enjoy other things in life uh, that, that, have, that have come short uh, the last 20 years. And, um, you know, like I said, I want to travel a bunch. Uh, I want to enjoy my family. And uh, now's the time to do so. I think the rest of this week will be a little hectic uh, still, but uh, I think next week everything will, will settle down. What's your uh, estimation on how the Mavericks will look going forward with Luca and KP at the two corner zones? Yeah, I mean, uh, I talked about it a little bit to the guys up there. Uh, I think it reminds me a little bit of, uh, of when I first got here. Um, young talent, a couple of veterans, but um, young guys who can build around uh, that are good dudes that, uh, you know, like the teammates, that like to work um, and want to get better. Um, so I think we're in a good place, but, you know, nothing, nothing is given this league. Uh, the West is, is brutal, as we all know. But if everybody keeps uh, working hard and improves over the summer and have a healthy uh, KP next year, I think they should be, should be fun to watch, hopefully for Mavs fans uh, for, for a long, long time and stay together like that and stay injury free and add a few veterans here. I think uh, we're on the right track. Derek, it's well known that you have a legacy. The players know it, your teammates know it. What's the number one thing you want them to take from your legacy? Well, I think just keep improving and never, never be satisfied with with what you have or what you accomplish. You know, somebody else is always in the gym getting better working uh, and, you know, just improve. Use the summer, um, add something to your game. Um, you know, always see yourself as a student of the game um, uh, and just, you know, keep working, keep improving because uh, somebody else is uh, somebody else will. 21 years, does it feel like 21 years? Did, did it fly by? Did it, did it feel like every single minute? How, what does that feel like? A little bit of both, you know. Uh, if you look back now, when I first got here and I saw some of those old videos with the bowl cut, it seems forever ago, <laughs> a lifetime ago. But also some of these memories are, uh, are just like it was yesterday, you know, meeting Steve, getting my first suit. I never owned a suit. So for the press conference after the draft, I had to get a suit fitted. and. You know, it's uh, it's so far away, but uh, uh, some of those memories are, are uh, feel like it's it was just yesterday. So that's a little bit of both, and um, you know, some of this stuff will obviously stay with me uh, for the rest of my life. How did you feel about the U.S. president shouting you out on Twitter? Yeah, that was that was cool. I mean, I haven't even got to everything, honestly. You know, it's been uh, it's been one thing after the next, um, but I did check Twitter some. Uh, especially after that home night here, when, once we got to San Antonio, things settled down. I, I was so emotional, I couldn't sleep. So I did, I did some some research online, and it's it's been it's been amazing uh, how many people have reached out. Some people I didn't even think would know me. Maybe that's a little naive of me, but it's been uh, yeah, it's been overwhelming how many how many people reached out over Twitter or phone. And, I'm going to get to, to all that once I settle down and really enjoy it and watch some of those videos and uh, once, uh, once I have a little bit of time. Speaking of uh, memories, could you take us back to that first game, very first game in Seattle and how totally different it was from your last game in San Antonio? Yeah, well, you know, I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, everything was new. Um, got to meet Detlef before the game. I was. Uh, I was just uh, super anxious and, um, you know, everything, um, you know, came at me at 100 miles an hour and, you know, I'm getting dressed. There's media in the locker room, which I've never had in, in Germany. So I, I, everything was just super new and, 
you know, it was always like, uh, almost like a deer in headlights. And so that was probably one of my worst games I ever played, you know, just because everything was, was so new. And, um, you know, that was, uh, that was quite an experience. Another game that I'll never forget, you know, I didn't score from the field and I was super down afterwards. I remember watching some film afterwards with Donnie. And, um, so that was, uh, that was my first game. And, and last game was uh, even even more memorable. You know what, what San Antonio did uh, was unbelievable. It got me all emotional before the game and um, embraced with Pop and um, you know just uh, a great, great, uh, classy organization. And I'll I'll never forget last night either. Well, I did uh, leaving the arena and then the plane ride and then the water cannon. Honestly, it's uh, yeah. Like I said last night, was relief. Relief. It's it's over. Um, you know, it's been obviously a long time building here. This this whole last few weeks, last month, and uh, glad it's over. And yeah, I didn't quite understand what the whole thing was with the, with the water, but they explained to me. I guess when pilots retire, uh, that that's what they do. And I thought that was that was super sweet. That was a nice touch. Mm -hmm. um, and emotion leaving the building. Yeah, it was it was great that some of my family and friends came down and seeing them and uh, seeing the excitement on their face and. Um, so no, it was, uh, that was great, but like I said, uh, definitely relieved that uh, it's over now. Rick Carlisle said that you were a relatable superstar, and that was uh, one of your unique qualities. Is that something you felt like you were that people could relate to you, even though you were this this NBA superstar? Uh, I mean, I don't know. You know, um, I came came uh, as a little kid of, from Germany 20 years ago, and um, always try to be myself, always try to have fun. Um, Always trying to compete hard when, when I was on the court and off the court. Really enjoying my time, enjoying my time, whether it was with fans, with teammates. Uh, always uh, trying to, uh, yeah, just have fun and uh, be myself. Yeah, no, I, honestly, uh, obviously be honored if, if that's something in the future, but. Uh, that's, uh, that's something that's that's for me. It's that's far away, and uh, we can. I'd love to have conversations, and I said that a million times. I'd love to be a part of the, of the mass for the rest of my life. Uh, in which function, uh, we'll have to wait and see. But I think other other things are first for now, and that's that's enjoying my family and um, everything else is secondary. I know that first year. Uh, just the city of Dallas. Uh, uh, embracing you, you had downtown lit up in blue and white, saying thank you, 41-21-1, uh, the fans. Just talk about that, your reaction to that. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the, uh, the support and the reception uh, has been phenomenal here. And it's, um, you know, you always hear a fan come up to me like, hey, the whole city loves you, but I don't know, that really doesn't mean anything. But when you, when you see it actually come together and see some of those videos and uh, I saw some some people started to cry when they talked about me retiring, and that that makes it super real. You know, that's that makes it super real and tough. I know your first year. Uh, you know, you talked about it a little bit, uh, how tough it was. Who helped you get through that first year? You know, support, um, trying to stay confident even though it's hard, um, hard work. You know, stay the course. And, you know, I always say Steve and Mike were, were huge. We were, were huge in my first year, not only supporting me on the court, but off, off the court, you know, taking me out, taking me to eat, taking me to movies so I just don't sit in the hotel room or at home and, and get homesick and um, think about how bad I'm playing or it's not working. And they just kept me busy um, and, you know, kept believing in me, kept pushing me, went to the gym every night with Nash. He played horse, played one-on-one. -on -one. Ultimately, yeah, that's it. It's, it's hard work and, um, and just work your way through tough times. And, and that, that way to, uh, makes it even more worth it uh, when the good times come. Was there, was there a tipping point? You said in the last couple of days that it runs together, but that you, you realized that no matter how bad you were, how much you were struggling, the fans were still behind you somewhere in year one and early in year two. And you said last night, I had to try and live up to that. How, why did you have to? Or what was the tipping point that made you want to? No, I felt the whole first year I was I was struggling, um, but fans I guess saw something in me or wanted me to succeed here, and um, you know I always wanted to work hard and, and pay that uh, pay that love back, and 
that support, pay it back and make it work. And so I worked as hard as I could to, um, to be the best player that, uh, that I could be. Um, you know, that meant a lot to me when there were games where I didn't play much or I didn't play at all. And I got it subbed in and, and the old reunion and uh, I got a standing ovation. So, of course, I'll, I'll never forget that support. Obviously, in 2011, um, that, that was a championship. But what are some of the memories that will really stick with you uh, throughout the rest of your life? Yeah, I mean, pff, there's too many to uh, to mention. I mean, this last year was, was has been incredible. Usually, you don't forget your first All-Star game when you walk in the locker room and all of a sudden, you know, you, you're accepted by them, but all of a sudden you're in the locker room with Kobe, KG, Tim Duncan, Shaq. I mean, that's, uh, that was an incredible experience back then. Um, yeah, losing the finals, I'll never forget. That whole week in Miami, that disaster, changing hotels. I mean, there is, there is a lot of memories. Losing uh, my MVP season, you know, that'll always stick with me in 07 when we won almost 70 games and we fall short. And, uh, I think all these disappointments are with me and uh, as well as, as the good times. Um, so, yeah, made, made lots of memories, as you would think, in, in 21 years. Made lots of friendships and uh, you know that I'll always cherish for the rest of my life. We in the media we always talk about who are some of the rude athletes and who are some of the nice athletes. You're always at the top of the nice list <laughs> even when the oh, dumb questions sweet. come your way. <laughs> you're on top of that list. <laughs> <laughs> and you just you answer those. What did that, what did that humility come from? I don't know honestly I think you know my my family was it was a great support system for me. When uh, when I was getting carried away a little bit, they were the ones to bring me back down. And when I was when I was crushed after losses in the playoffs, they, they were there to build me back up. And I would go on uh, vacation with them, and uh, and they patched me back together. And um, you know, just I guess the way I was raised, and, um, with 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 family values, and you know, I never really tried to take myself too serious. And uh, I guess that's about it. You know. The, just try to treat people with, with respect. And, um, you know, you, you obviously treat people the way you want to be treated. And, you know, that's how, it's, uh, how I approach life. You have a couple more slide, a couple of drinks. What's hurting more, your head or your ankle? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, actually, it wasn't that bad last night. Uh, but, yeah, the ankle is, is starting to be, feel a little bit, you know. I think it's going to be for a while. Um, I'm going to take a few weeks off of, of doing nothing, no running, no jumping, and hopefully it'll, uh, it'll be good for the rest you of my have, life. You had a part in the last many years, sometimes big, sometimes small, in shaping the roster or helping recruit uh, uh, players. How, to what extent do you expect that to uh, continue? Probably not at all this, this summer. Um, I don't, I, I'm not sure how much I'll be around, like I said. Uh, We'll be around at least at the, here at the beginning of the summer. The kids are still in school, and you know, then if you guys want to come out, my baseball game is again. I think June seventh, so I'll be here for that. And then my birthday is after that, uh, which probably forty-one turns forty-one. I mean, <laughs> got to go out on a bang there. And, uh, and then I'm probably out after that, probably late June, early July. I'll, I'll, I'll be gone um, for most of the summer. And so, but you know, like, we have enough young guys that that can do their recruiting. We have uh, Mike, Mark, and Donnie, obviously, uh, that, that do do great in their job. So um, I'm not too worried about it. I think uh, the, the franchise is in good hands. Dirk, right, your thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As your children get older, can you see yourself moving into a Nash like role with this team? Uh, what was he doing? Like an advisor. <laughs> He doesn't probably even know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, whatever these 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 uh, conversations are, I'm I'm obviously open. Uh, after a few years, uh, if something has to come. I can't just sit at home for the rest of my life. You know, I want uh, I want to have some challenges uh, in a way, and um, so yeah, I'm sure I'll be involved uh, somewhere down the road, um, but. Uh, I don't think that's 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 for now, and I don't I won't even think about it for now.